I'm standing on the walls of Derry in Northern Ireland. These walls were built 400 years ago when the whole of Ireland was colonised by the British. And they have huge significance for people who wish Northern Ireland to remain within Britain. And that's because a very significant event here happened in 1688. Thirteen young apprentice boys slammed shut a gate against the troops of King James II, a Catholic king who was doing battle with King William of Orange, a Protestant king. And a siege started that lasted 105 days and over 10,000 people died. Most of them died of hunger and fever. But Derry is also the site of another iconic uprising. Behind me is another iconic declaration of independence. You are now entering Free Day was emblazoned in this wall in 1969 by people fighting for civil rights in what became known as the Battle of the Bog Side. It was part of an uprising against our corrupt local government since the formation of the state 50 years earlier. On the 30th of January 1972, 13 civil rights marchers were murdered close to this spot by British Army paratroopers. It took 38 years, a 12-year tribunal of inquiry, and nearly 20 million pounds before the British government apologised for what happened and admitted the truth of Bloody Sunday. You can see it's a continuous site of protest to this day. I was born yards from this spot, so the circumstances of our birth and our history define us. Voltaire said, if you want to find out who rose you, find out who it is that you can't criticise. That seems self-evident, but on the 30th of January 1972, along with thousands of other people, I learned something else as well. I learned that whoever controls the media has the power. So what has all this got to do with art? Well, when I was a child, all I ever wanted to be was an artist. I had a great certainty about that. And years later, I went to our college in Belfast, but it was at the very, very worst part of the Troubles, as we call them in Northern Ireland, in the early 70s, and bombs were going off all the time. And we used to, in fact, we used to go to the top floor of the Art College building and watch these plumes of smoke going up, followed by, you know, huge fires. And uh, I really struggled to know how to deal with all that while I was at Art College. You know, it would have really vexed me to know how to make some kind of meaningful um, exchange or contribution to what was going on around me. And it was only years later when I got the chance to become a filmmaker that that seemed to make more sense to me at the time. It was more of a more appropriate way of expressing myself. But the question of being an artist and what it means to be an artist and how to manage the world when the world's unmanageable and when other people want to control the narrative, that has never really left me. You know, I've always wondered, like, how is it that in the worst of times, People do need to express themselves and will express themselves through art and culture, no matter what's going on, um, apart from when they're at the point of death. So I think that a song or a poem or a dance is a form of imaginative energy. It's a way of refocusing our rage or our love or a way of communicating with people uh, another means of interpreting the world. If I can communicate with people as an artist, I'm not really that interested. That's the most important thing for me. It's kind of a cornerstone. So when I think about art, I, I try to think of all its meanings. Um, art can be about, it can be an affirmation of beauty. It can be about sustaining the spirit. It can be potent. It can be empowering. It can be confrontational. But most of all, it's a form of communication. Pure hatred. Pure hatred. I just couldn't bear the thought that human beings could actually sit down and plan such a horrific thing. When I got a chance to make the Far Side of Revenge, I was funded by an organisation called the Arts Council of Ireland, which um, gave me complete editorial freedom under a scheme called the Real Art Scheme. And that was just such a relief. Uh, it was the first time it had ever happened to me as a, as a documentary maker. And it, it enabled me to allow women who had suffered a lot to be able to um, express themselves. And most of all, to showcase the work of Tess Sapinock, a, a, a magician in her own right, a woman who um, 
knows how to release people from pain. And to combine all those things in one particular art form was just fantastic for me. And I just think whatever it takes, whatever it takes to help people express themselves and especially to help people release themselves from their pain, let's do it.